All right, we've talked about arrays. Now we're going to talk about for loops. For loops, loops in general, are a fantastic time saver in programming languages. You want to carry out a task and you want to do it repeatedly, you want to do something many, many, many times, or an unknown number of times, and you don't want to have to write the same line of code over and over and over again, loops are what's going to save you tons of time. So the basic concept for a for loop, we've got an array here. And we've got a whole bunch of names inside this array. We've looked at the length property of the array to find out how many items are inside of it. And we've saved that into a variable num names. And now what we want to do is we want to write out each of these names and we want to write them out separately. I don't just want to write out console.log and write out the entire list as one piece of text. I want to write them out one at a time. And maybe I want to write them out all in capitals. So I'm doing the to uppercase function on each one of the strings. So how do we do this? Well, here's the basic construct. You'll see this type of construct again and again in multiple programming features. There's going to be a keyword. Following the keyword, there's going to be a set of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, there's going to be some keywords, some terms, some settings, some parameters that you place. And then there's going to be a set of curly braces. Inside the set of curly braces, for a for loop, that's where you're going to put all the stuff that you want to have happen again and again and again. If it's some other type of feature in the language, there'd be something else, be a, a different collection of programming commands inside of here. But keyword, parentheses, curly braces, you're going to see this structure again and again and again. For a for loop, inside here, there are three parts. And that's what I put these labels here for. There's three things that we need to place inside of here. An initialize statement. So if you want to loop a certain number of times, in order for the computer to know how many times you want to loop, how many times you want it to do something, you have to give it a counter. You're going to say, OK, let's use this variable as a counter. So I'm going to say var i equals 0. That's going to be my initialize statement. i is going to be what I use to keep track of how many times I've looped. And I'm going to start counting at the number 0. My test is going to be, how do I know when I'm done? Well, let's say I wanted to loop 10 times. So my test is going to be, as long as i is less than 10, keep going. So starting at 0, as long as i is less than 10, I'm going to keep doing whatever's inside of here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 10 times I'm going to go through this loop. My last part here, the increment, this is where I'm going to say how much I want to add to the value of i each time I go through. Now there's a few different ways that you can write this, but these are the three parts, initialize, test, and increment. So let's do this once, console.log, and I'm going to write out names, sub some number here. Now I don't want to do 10 times because this list could have two things, it could have a thousand things. So that's why I went and found out what names.length was and saved it in this variable, num names. There. So I'm going to start at number 0, which is the first item in my list. I'm going to keep going as long as i is less than the length of the array. You remember, with an array, the index for the very last item is always one less than the length. So as long as I'm less than the length, I'm good. And then inside here, I don't want to put a number. I don't want to say, write out the first name. If I did that, and 
we ran this, I get the first name over and over and over again. If I put in the last number, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this will be number seven. There we go. I get the last name happening again and again. I don't want to do that. I want this number. This is the purpose for this counter, is it gives me a reference number each time I'm going through. The first time I go through, the value of i is going to be zero. When I get to the end of my loop, I'm going to add one to the value of i. That's going to make it one, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and so on. So we run this again with i, my variable in there. There we go. Now I get everything from the list because the value of i changes. I'm actually running this line of code eight times. One time for each possible value of i. Now, I said that there's a few different ways that we can write this. For the increment, I could have said i equals i plus 1. Nothing wrong with that. Come over here, we'll clear it, run it again. There, the exact same result as we had before. So this is fine. I could increment by values of 2. There we go. I get every second name. If I made that 3, be every third name. So I get number 0, number 4, number 7. Um, sorry, 0, 3, and 6. If I do 4, I'm going to get zero, uh, 0 and 4. If we make this a really big number, I'm going to get 0, and then I'm going to get this number as my next. So I'm never going to get to the second one because this incrementing gets done right at the very end of the loop. After it's done everything inside here, then it does the increment. Now, plus equals 1. That is a short form for i equals i plus 1. Works the same way. And i plus plus, that is the shortest way that you can write i equals i plus 1. The double plus sign means add 1. For the other side, for the initialize, we have a few ways we can write this. One is that we can save our i equals 0. Another possibility is we can declare the variable outside and then just assign it inside here. We get the exact same result. And the other way is you could declare it and assign it someplace else in your code and then just leave this first part blank. So you're just saying, ah, I don't need to initialize anything. I've already got something initialized that I'm going to use. But People who do that, you know, they're a little odd. We don't talk to them too much. There we go. So that works as well. The most common is just to have this inside of here and let, which is a new way of declaring variables in the latest version of uh, JavaScript. Let works perfectly well here. It'll do the exact same thing as well. I'd actually recommend that if you're just starting out, use let inside of all your for loops. Now, one other way that we can do this, let's say we wanted to go backwards through our array. We could initialize this as numNames minus 1. So numNames, there's 8, minus 1 will give us 7. So starting at 7, as long as i is greater than or equal to 0, each time I come through, i equals i minus 1, 
there. We go through the array backwards. Just the test and the initialize, we kind of swap those. Make sure you're doing the minus one here. At the end, we can do the same thing that we did with the plus plus. It can be i minus equals one, or just i minus minus. This is called decrementing instead of incrementing, but same process, same idea. There we go. So stepping backwards through the array, starting at the end, working our way through. And that's a for loop. That's really all there is to it. We've got different ways of declaring the initialize, different ways of incrementing or decrementing, but in the end, what it comes down to is the most common way of doing this is this. Let i equal zero, i is less than num names, i plus plus. This is the length of your array. Now, I've used i here, i standing for integer. Um, you can use any variable that you want as the counter. You can say c for counter. Change it in all four places. Still works. We can use n for number, c for counter, i for integer, q for qu'est-ce que c'est? You can use anything you want. Any variable will work. It doesn't have to be a single digit. This is just a throwback to um, many years ago, back when memory was a huge concern and you tried to save space and memory by keeping your variable name short. When writing your loops, you'd use a single character. I, C, or N were the conventions. In any case, that is a for loop.